Well, you'd have to say it's rather unfortunate that it's only now that these questions are coming up. But I'm sure behind the scenes, the various clubs that signed him, you know, post his medical condition being diagnosed, uh, would have had their meetings. They would have discussed this at the board level, you know, with the coaches, the medical team, and they would have known the risks. But obviously now that unfortunately the the young man has has passed more questions more scrutiny would come in it wasn't just brighton you know that that deal collapsed and obviously it was a big deal potential big deal and a breakthrough for the boy from fc zurich everything seemed to be fine FC Zurich is a well-respected club and they felt that they would have, you know, uh, notified them or noticed there's a problem. But Brighton, once the heart problem or the heart condition was detected uh, officially for the very first time, the deal was called off. So he couldn't move to uh, the English Premier League or to England at the time. But then even with that, he was still on the market. And then he signed a four-year deal with Levante, you know, um, in Spain. So you ask yourself, had he recovered? Was he okay? Did they consult Brighton? Did they consult FC Zurich? Did they consult his medical team? Has the boy, uh, is he okay now? Has he, has he, uh, what's the word to you? Not healed. I wonder, has he recovered fully to play professional football at the highest level? Well, he signed a four-year deal. But, he was loaned out to Zaragoza again in Spain. He scored a couple of goals, played about nine matches, but the symptoms resurfaced and he had to move on. So between that time where the deal collapsed in England, he kept on moving on, was in Spain for some time, then moved to Denmark in 2020, um, joined Ridge, scores on his debut, scored a few more games, uh, a couple more goals, but after just five games, this hard issue resurfaced. So you can see the pattern. But this is where it gets a bit uh, tricky because the player now says, look, I I can play. I feel okay and I'm a strong believer in God. And it, it's if, if, God forbid, something happens to me, then that is the will of God. So this is where who had to draw the line? The clubs who employed him thereafter had to draw the line obviously medical tests you know you do a medical before you sign to a club did they detect it did they keep quiet did the player insist that i want to play regardless of being told you're not you're not good he collapsed on the pitch in austria collapsed on the pitch in denmark you know and then he famously said um when i die then that is the will of god and he was allowed to continue to play. 2022 December, less than a year, almost a year ago, he went to Albania, signs for uh, Ignatia, that, that club, you know, he, he, was, he was a bang, a breakthrough headline sensation. 20 goals in 28 games. I mean, that is something, but had he fully recovered or was it that his goal scoring prowess his excellence on the pitch overshadowed what was a very precarious situation we wouldn't know because unfortunately less than a year after he signed or almost a year after he signed he collapsed on the pitch and this time there was no coming back there was no resuscitation and that is the story as we have it in a league game for the player, his family, his agents, his you know coaches, they would, well, the player is gone, but for those he's left behind, there will be questions they'll be asking. And when you hear possibly experts talking about potential legal action, there is a gray line there. You're not too sure how that legal action would be put out and, and whether or not it is even possible or if indeed these clubs were negligent with his medical history and his very fragile condition to have continued to engage him, employed him, leading to his demise.